Hello and welcome to this quick video about Express LRS. Now I added an Express LRS receiver into this bind and fly model. This is the Speedio Mario 5 stuff. I did videos on it a while ago. I'll put links down below if you're interested. But interestingly, I've had a couple of questions recently and one from a Patreon about struggling to get Express LRS working inside their model. So whether or not you're adding your own kind of Express LRS receiver, there's only a handful of things that you need to check outside, obviously, having the receiver bound and powered. So I thought I'd put all of the standard gotchas that I constantly am helping people with in one video, because when that Patreon asked me for a little bit of help with this, I didn't have one video I could point to. So I'm making this so in future I can. So stick with me if you are playing with Express LRS and you're struggling to get all this stuff working. Links to other good videos that you can go and watch that explain specific things if part of this isn't interesting. But let me go through the whole A to Z of the common mistakes that will stop it from working on your model. So let's start here on the left hand side with the radio. And the main issues that I see on this side is the radio isn't configured for Express LRS in the model setup. You need to go into the radio itself and depending on whether or not Express LRS is either the internal circuitry of the radio or in a module plugged in the back, you need to enable CRSF for whichever position you have it, whether internal or external. Once you have that configured for the model, and this is a setting that's typically model by model on things like HTX, then once you have that set up, you should be able to go into the menus, into the system menus, find the Express LRS Lua script and run it and for it to populate like this. That is step one. The next one then is making sure that the radio is bound to receiver. Now, I have made a video on this. I'll put a link down below if you want to come watch it. There are two main ways to do your binding. The kind of traditional way where you power the receiver three times, which is not the way that I'd recommend you do it these days, or the way that I would recommend doing it now is putting a passphrase on both the receiver and the radio. Again, I made a video about that link down below. And you'll know when it is bound because there will be some kind of announcement of the radio, uh, which is about the telemetry being received. You should have the these kind of little icons in the main display showing you the signal strength and if you go and look in the telemetry sensors section on your radio and discover sensors you will find that there are things being listed and these are all the stuff that's coming back from the receiver letting the radio know things like the signal strength and the quality of the link etc these two things are really basic and not common areas of the problem but i'm including here for completeness. The next one I do see occasionally issues with. Now the receiver, this is kind of one of the little Radio Master RP1s, but it could be whatever you have. There are actually four wires that go from the receiver to the flight controller that are going to be talking that same CRSF protocol that we set up over here in the radio. So what that means is that these four wires need to be connected correctly to a UART on the flight controller. That means the ground of five volts need to go to a ground of five volt pin on the flight controller. And crucially, the transmit pin that's here on the RP1 needs to go to the receive pin on the flight controller and vice versa. Think of it like the transmit pin being somebody talking and the receive pin being somebody listening. So you want the talking pin talking to the listening pin and vice versa. Also make sure that the soldering is good and that you have it connected to the right pins on the flight controller. Most flight controllers, when you look at the manual, will have a specific UART that they expect you to connect to these kind of receivers, talking CRSF. And it could you typically be the Express LRS things, but in older manuals, it'll be talking about things like Crossfire and Tracer, which was the original systems that actually developed the CRSF protocol. Do make sure that your soldering's all good and that connection is all sorted. And of course, make sure that the receiver is powered. Luckily, most of the times these days, when you plug your flight controller in, it will supply five volts to the receiver. So the receiver will be powered. And while it's powered, just plugged into the computer, then that means you can also go and do the radio configuration and bind it before you have to start plugging batteries and things in. The final area is the configuration of the flight controller itself. Now, 
In here, what you have to do is make sure that the UART is set for serial receiver for the one that you have it plugged in on. So that's what this looks like. So in the ports tab, for example, in this SpeedB example, this is going to be this UART2 is set for serial RX. That tells the flight controller this is the one it should be listening to. Sometimes on a flight controller, if it has inputs for S bus and other things, it may mean that this has to be configured for a different UART. So make sure you're not overlooking that step. The other thing you need to do is in the receiver tab, you need to be setting CRSF as the serial receiver provider. Now this is beta flight that we're talking about here, but this tends to be similar kind of things that you have to do in both iNav and even things like Arduino Pilot. By setting this up, CRSF, along with the ports tab, that is telling the flight controller to expect to be talking CRSF on that particular UR that you've configured. Last little tip here is that if you want telemetry back to the radio, so if you have something like a GPS attached to this quad and you want GPS coordinates and all that stuff to go back to the radio, then you know what? Turn on telemetry here and you'll get that telemetry back to the radio too. Once you've got that set up, you should be able to see the controls moving in the receiver tab as you move things around. That's the confirmation that everything is working okay. Last little tip I'll give you is make sure that the channel order is correct. AETR is going to be defaults in things like beta flight. Make sure that when you move the throttle, it's the throttle channel that's moving and that all the channels kind of settle down for the roll, pitch and your at 1500 and then you're set. So there you have it. That is all the standard stuff that you need to check if it isn't working. The most common ones I tend to come across are people not configuring the correct UART in Betaflight, iNav or Arduino Pilot, not setting up the protocol as CRSF, which is what by default the Express RS receiver will be talking to the flight controller with, and not having the receive to transmit wire and the transmit to receive wire between the receiver and the flight controller too. Those are the three most common. But hopefully by going through that now, you'll have spotted the thing that you may need to just go and check. But by following that, you should be sorted. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.